We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are, are all united. united. Hello, hello. Dear participants, greetings. Hello, everyone. Happy to see so many faces, already familiar faces. And I'm um, even more happy to welcome those participants who are with us online as we are fully hybrid for this year's IGF. And we are tremendously thankful to uh, the United Nations, uh, DESA and IGF Secretariat. And of course, to our amazing host country, we have representative of the host country here who is leading the preparations and uh, ongoing discussions of the Youth Summit, first ever Youth Summit, if I'm not confusing, at least of this scale. Uh, we have also with us our colleague uh, Alim Hapu from Center for Digital I uh, I for Global IT Cooperation. My name is Roman Chukov. I am an uh, outgoing MAG member in the IGF. I've been working here uh, for IGF uh, in three years, and uh, it was the best year, I think, so far, because we eventually, after the pandemic, had an opportunity to meet up uh, in hybrid, and I hope that uh, the pandemic will be overcome by next years. And of course, you know, as Russia will be presiding in uh, IGF in 2025, we'll be happy to see you all there in person. Uh, dear friends, we now witness a drastic change in uh, our digital behavior uh, in uh, our everyday life because more and more uh, influence uh, is uh, being uh, exposed by the social media, by our digital services. And we just, even now, we speak online and uh, we want uh, young people to be fully protected. This is very important because when we were young, the technologies were not uh, so much developed and we didn't have so many risks. This is why we believe that the younger generation, who we are now, uh, should also be uh, uh, protecting the future generations and even uh, already now brainstorming how we should do it. Even in the Secretary General's uh, recent Our Common Agenda, it was stated uh, that it's very important to take care about future generations. So uh, this is what we wanted to discuss today. Uh, we actually wanted to uh, give the floor to our amazing uh, organizers of the IGF Youth Summit, to Emilia. And uh, how, how did it go? Let us know what uh, was the result, how young people contributed to joint work. Please, uh, you have five minutes just to tell us uh, uh, about this amazing experience. Thank you. Hello. Okay, it's working. Fantastic. Thank you very much for having me here, for inviting me to speak a few words here. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, so, yeah, I am one of the members of the steering committee of Youth IG of Poland, and together with two other youth initiatives, uh, this year uh, we organized uh, the Youth Summit. And the idea of this summit uh, was something that evolves from the consultations we were having last year with other young people. And a lot of people brought up an issue that, you know, we have these youth summits, we have the IGF each year, and there's a lot of talking, but after that, not so much happened. So how we can make sure that our ideas are not just, you know, we are not just throwing them in the air. So actually, the postulates we are making, the messages we are creating, they, they will be delivered to, some, to somebody, to some stakeholder groups. So that's why we really wanted to put in the central point uh, how youth could become more included into the policymaking processes, like how they could really have an influence. So. That's how we came with the idea of the Project Youth Summit. We wanted to start the preparations early, so our postulates would be very well prepared. So we had an open call for applications. 
a lot of people applied and the level was really, really high. It was a very, very hard choice, but we chose the best 80 people and they worked in eight thematic groups uh, on different fields of internet governance. And uh, each group was led by the coordinator who was a youth expert from the youth observatory or youth coalition on internet governance. So I think that in this project, we had three really innovative elements. Like the first one is that we have started preparations to the Youth Summit so early. So it took almost, I think, three months. The second thing that it was the result of the work of not only one initiative, but three of them. So I guess we, we just managed to gather more perspectives uh, into this project. And the third one is that instead of messages, we uh, came up with the idea of points of action. So something like a one step further. Each point of action would answer uh, to three questions. The first one, what is the challenge we can observe in the particular area of internet governance? The second one, what is the possible solution? And the third one, and it is something very important, to whom this point of action is targeted, like who could help young people in implementing those ideas, those solutions. Because, you know, usually young people, as young people, we don't have much power, much resources ourselves. So we just need the support of other stakeholder groups, of other parties, like private sector or government, or some intergovernmental organizations. So that's why we wanted those points of action to be targeted to somebody. And we had a great opportunity to present those points of action at this youth summit. And what I think is the next step is just delivering them as wide as possible and delivering them to the people they are addressed to. So I guess that in the nutshell, this would be the idea. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Let's give a huge round of applause to our organizers. <laughs> you are not ready for <laughs> such situation. Dear colleagues, yes, uh, it's great to hear when uh, young people are creating uh, opportunities for self-realization for other young people. And uh, of course, digital sphere now gives us not only risks, but also opportunities. And uh, this year also was an uh, inaugural one for, uh, for us in Russia, where first time ever uh, we've held the uh, first youth Russian IGF as a part of NRIs. And, uh, I think it would be great to know some very, very uh, interesting uh, consequences because uh, our young people also finished uh, the work with uh, some youth message, youth communique, action plan, I don't know, all <laughs> different names. And uh, the idea was to uh, uh, hold a very, very practical approach and try to implement such uh, initiatives in reality. So for instance, um, one of the ideas uh, was to uh, invite young people to have their representative uh, in digital sphere for communication with governments, business, civil society organizations, universities, uh, other youth entities, NGOs, and uh, we called it like a digital youth ombudsperson, ombudsman or ombudswoman, or just youth ombuds team, as it turned out in our uh, case because uh, we've uh, uh, elected three people and that would be amazing uh, if these people also can uh, briefly comment the results of their work. Uh, I think that we can even show you some video. Uh, so please, dear colleagues, can you kindly help us? Это интернет. За его более чем 30-летнюю историю он изменился не раз. Сначала он был вот таким, потом таким и даже таким. Сейчас же он выглядит так. Но с развитием цифровых технологий, к сожалению, появляются теневые стороны прогресса, негативные последствия и реальные угрозы. Многие из нас не знают, что делать в подобных ситуациях, а такие понятия, как цифровая безопасность и цифровая гигиена для некоторых и вовсе не знакомы. Но 
На каждое действие всегда есть равное противодействие. Привет! Меня зовут Дмитрий Гуляев, и я молодежный цифровой омбудсмен. Моя главная задача — защищать твои права в цифровом пространстве. Интернет — это не только возможности, прогресс и знания, но это также и вызовы, с которыми мы сталкиваемся ежедневно. Команда молодежного цифрового омбудсмена продвигает правила использования интернета и технологий во благо. Вместе мы поддерживаем молодежные инициативы и ведем общественные проекты. Если хочешь узнать больше о нашей работе или нуждаешься в поддержке и защите, заходи на сайт. Thank you. Thank you very much. This was an example of one of the initiatives from the Youth Russian Internet Governance Forum, where you see uh, there is already a website, youthombudsman.ru. You can uh, check it. And uh, uh, what I wanted to do now, I wanted to give the floor to these uh, people who are uh, very inspired uh, and active in the sphere of uh, protecting youth and children uh, rights online and creating uh, relevant opportunities among many, many uh, opportunities which are happening now, young people should be somehow helped, navigated, and uh, hopefully my colleagues will tell you how, uh, through their action uh, in our country, they see it, which you potentially can do also in your countries, because we believe it should be kind of open franchise, uh, so people can just do the same, maybe through the IJF NRIs uh, in their countries. So I'm very honored to give the floor to Dmitry Guleyev, a uh, digital youth ombudsperson of Russia. Dear participants of the IGF, dear friends, uh, greetings from Moscow. My name is Dmitry Guleyev, and I have been the youth digital ombudsperson in Russia since April 2021. Here is a brief introduction of what I do and the problems I tackle. Every day, children and youth around the world face violations of their rights online such as cyberbullying, cyber grooming, catfishing, and so on. Sometimes young users do such things themselves without realizing that it is harmful or illegal. The question is, where can young people go to get help and guidance? Many of them hesitate or fear to talk directly to psychologists or teachers or even their parents. The virtual generations wants a real dialogue, a trusted person to discuss these issues with. This is how the idea of the Youth Digital Ombudsperson came into being. Me and my team are a piece of young people who speak the same language as they do. We share the concerns and face the same issues online. We do not lecture, we use innovative and creative forms of dialogue. We defend the rights and interests of young people online and build bridges between youth and other stakeholders, such as business, civil society, the state, and the international community, to engage them in a dialogue on topical issues that young people face in the digital sphere. We help young people promote their IT projects, ideas, and startups by giving them an opportunity to present themselves and participate in public IT events. And now, I'm asking my teammates to provide you with more details of what we have achieved so far. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, Dmitry. We kindly ask uh, our team to also run the little presentation for you so our colleagues can uh, comment. Uh, I don't know, uh, should we... Alim, are you clicking the slides? Yeah? So just click it uh, where it should be. And uh, I am also very, very uh, welcoming uh, Mr. Alexei Starikov, uh, who is uh, from Gimo University, uh, our uh, leading international affairs university. And Alexei, are you with us? Can you please tell us? Uh, yes, hello, everyone. How do you Can see you your work? Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, it's a pity that it was not possible for me to uh, participate offline, but I'm very glad to see uh, everyone in Zoom. So, well, uh, here is the uh, overview of our work. Uh, our team, uh, as Dmitry um, already mentioned, uh, has only been active for six months. 
quite a short period of time, but we have already gained some considerable practical experience and we are eager to share it with you today. Uh, we are proud to say that since April, uh, we have managed to hold uh, one event almost uh, every week. It was quite intense and uh, engaging. Uh, around 600 school children, students, uh, their parents have participated in our workshops, uh, roundtables and other interactive activities. And their feedback was the best part of it. Uh, some of them said they hadn't really realized the possible impact of uh, or seriousness of their actions online. Uh, others changed their attitude to certain problems such as cyberbullying. Uh, we were also involved in expert discussions. The uh, Youth Digital Ombudsperson has joined uh, three experts council of various uh, public organizations and taking part in 20 experts and 10 major events uh, with a digital agenda, including uh, St. Petersburg Economic Forum and Eastern Economic Forum. So it's more than uh, 30 in total. In addition, we have an ambition to work uh, in regions. Uh, you probably know that uh, Russia is a huge country. It consists of uh, 85 uh, entities with their own cultural uh, peculiarities, traditions and history. Uh, so given these facts uh, and the workload, uh, spreading the institute across Russia actually seems to uh, be a daunting task. However, we have already uh, engaged uh, the representatives of seven Russian uh, regions, uh, both the administration and young people themselves. Uh, we have been to Krasnodar, uh, Vladimir, Hantimansiysk and other cities. Uh, and we are also trying to scale up by creating our own major uh, dialogue platforms. Just a couple of weeks ago, uh, a forum called the Internet for Youth uh, took place at um, Gimo uh, University. Uh, more than 400 people, uh, young people, along with top experts in public administration, IT uh, and business, discussed uh, digital opportunities uh, and risks for youth. Uh, thus, we have uh, joined the larger uh, process of developing self-regulation uh, on the internet and we are determined to make uh, our own contribution. Uh, however, let us not forget that uh, our priority is defending uh, the rights and interests of young people online. Uh, and with this in mind, we have developed a special uh, platform uh, called Digital Assistance on our uh, website. Uh, I think it's uh, going to be on the next slide. Alim, could you please change the slides of the presentation? Okay, this digital platform uh, is meant to be a bridge between young people who encountered uh, rights violations in the digital environment and experts experts, institutions, and bodies that are ready to support them. Everything is simple and intuitive. Uh, you need to fill in a short online form. The first step is to indicate the type of the problem you faced, from cyberbullying to data protection. Uh, you can see um, all of the topics at the bottom of this slide. And if none of them suits, you can choose other. Then you describe the situation, uh, state how it affects your uh, well-being and submit the form. Um, if you do not want to disclose personal information, you can send your message anonymously. Uh, the message then will be analyzed and directed to a group of experts who will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to proceed best uh, in your situation and which relevant uh, authorities you may contact to solve the problem. And then they can also uh, give advice on what to do next and how to avoid possible negative consequences. Um, of course, I have not described the, you know, all the activities of the Youth Digital Ombudsperson, uh, but I hope that I've managed to convince you that our institution works hard and deserves the attention at the international level. Um, we are trying to uh, use all of our strengths and capabilities to share uh, our experience with both national and international society. Um, so we have a lot to share with you and we are ready to absorb and implement your best practices. Uh, at this point, uh, I would like to let um, to give the floor uh, to my colleague, Alim. Thank you. 
Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? I hope so. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone who came to today's session, either online or here on site in Katowice. Uh, it's really a great honor to be a speaker at the IGF and especially discuss matters of youth empowerment as my colleagues and my colleagues from Poland, from Youth IGF Summit, uh, and my colleagues from uh, YDO team, Youth Digital Ombudsperson team mentioned before, we have a whole new track dedicated to youth empowerment. But while discussing uh, the perspectives and future development of the YDO institution at large, uh, I think it is absolutely vital to go back to the origins of this initiative as YDO Youth Digital Ombudsperson Institute was established on the grounds of the first uh, Youth Russian Internet Governance Forum, as Roman mentioned before. It's a brand new event that started off in uh, six on uh, six of April 2021 and is and is held annually as a part of large UN IGF ecosystem or family, as we called it sometimes. Uh, one of the main tracks of this forum, of our forum, is youth empowerment, definitely. And I think it is our common goal just as much as it is a point for action for all stakeholders. Uh, we, within this delicate and certainly crucial agenda, uh, we strive to provide young individuals like the ones who, share, who join us here today uh, with opportunities, with real opportunities for personal and especially professional growth in this new digital age. Uh, youth RIGV, as in short we call it, is uh, set as a bridge that unites generations, countries, and communities across Russia and even beyond. Uh, the next forum will be held on April 6, 2022. Uh, you're actually all invited to it. We will be glad to have such a massive participation from international community from all countries around the world. Uh, and it will host several key tracks that I think uh, should be priority areas uh, for future IGFs as well, such as youth and child safety on the web, uh, the future of jobs, metaverses, as we were surprised this year with Zuckerberg's announcement. I think it's quite important we discuss these issues. Destructive content moderation, uh, and a special attention this year, next year, will be given to cyber sports and general perception and perspectives, prospects of e-gaming in our age. In addition, there are certainly ambitious plans to establish a wide door grant, uh, Youth Digital Ombudsperson grant, a special award that will be awarded for impact-oriented social digital projects and IT startups, uh, and thereby provide young individuals, talented individuals, not only with information, but also financial support. As a part of this endeavor, uh, YDO team uh, tries to attract partners from the public, business, and technical community to provide a full support for youth initiatives. Uh, all in all, Youth Rig is expanding, growing. It is becoming stronger every year, serving as a platform for young, agile, and those who are ready for action. Uh, the Wido Institute is also on the path of scaling, as my colleague has mentioned, Alexei. Uh, in the near future, it is, expanded, it is expected to expand in numerous regions of Russia and go even further in its pursuit of ensuring protection and representation of human rights on the Internet. Uh, now, allow me to elaborate a little bit on the prospects of international promotion of the Wido Initiative. So... In 2021, the Youth Freak, the result of the Youth Freak was the establishment of the Youth Digital Ombudsperson and Youth Communique that was a collection of ideas, aspirations and concepts from youth uh, in Russia that uh, saw the development of digital environment and world in general and recommendations, some basic recommendations for international organizations and international society at large. Uh, and it is expected that by 2022, uh, the idea, the very concept of protection of rights of children, of youth, representation of youth, and youth empowerment on the web will go globally. By the year 2022, we expect to scale uh, the Wido Institute internationally to promote it uh, more and more, so that more and more UN member states can join this initiative and work together in this multi-stakeholder approach, because as Amelia here mentioned, we need to involve all actors, not just youth or government, but also public sector, technical community. We need to have a dialogue with IT platforms. We need to engage 
and we need to involve youngsters and those who are making decisions, policy makers, everyone who is interested and everyone who, is, who matters. And all we need, of course, is youth. Uh, yeah. I would like to say just, yeah, thank you very much. And if you have some questions uh, after the discussion uh, or right now, we have a mic, you can ask them, always direct them to us, to any speakers. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Alim, Alexei, and Dmitri, you did a great work. And uh, we still have uh, more than 30 minutes to proceed uh, with uh, several uh, online speakers from different corners of the world. And also we'll be happy if uh, you or other participants uh, in the chat are requesting the floor. As Fred kindly uh, advised uh, in the chat, and I'm tracking the chat <laughs> just in case, uh, you can kindly uh, write your questions there or hand, uh, raise your hand in Zoom or here when we come to the uh, stage of uh, Q&A. So, shall we try to move to other regions' experiences and aspirations? I don't know if uh, Jenny Shanshila is already with us, uh, who is a quite active young person from uh, Latin America. Uh, Jenny, do you hear us? Let us hear and see you. Good morning. Uh, hello. Can you tell us it, uh, how... Well, it's a good morning here. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Sorry that we uh, are speaking to you at so early hour uh, in Latin America. Uh, but kindly tell us uh, what young people there uh, know, want and dream about in the digital sphere. Why do you think uh, we should uh, protect youth and children online and how to ensure that youth have more possibilities and how we take all the risks? Please. Thank you so much. And as I told you, it's good morning here, but I am happy to be in this forum. And I am Jenny Chinchilla from El Salvador. I am a woman with disability. El Salvador is in Latin America and in Central America to be specifically. And so I am a user of a wheelchair. And I think it's the importance of internet access more in this pandemic context for everything, uh, for uh, children, for uh, young people, the connection of internet uh, to be online to with uh, so many data is important, and but at the same time, it's a double tools uh, for so many things because um, also putting risks at young people, but at the other uh, time, give us a lot of uh, tools and knowledge to be uh, to access at uh, the study work opportunity etc but a uh, young woman with disability i consider the necessity of uh, protecting all young online no just in a region in different regions including in my uh, region that is latin america and um, why is important uh, because at the same time, we have access to internet, to be online, but we need to put in order also the information and the access because put in risk uh, people and in young people also. But um, I, I, I support the idea. I support the idea to be, uh, for example, I don't, I don't, I don't, um, pronounces very, very exactly this this word, but um, one person in each country. I don't know if I I say that that's word, but put in order uh, as a uh, people uh, to be expecting and to be in the making this decision on internet. And I think please don't put ahead no more. Uh, at site at people with disability, young with disability, because uh, young with disability, we are not a problem. We want to be part of the solution. Thank you. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Jenny. Uh, thank you. Muchas gracias. We are so happy that you are with us. And again, this is 
a very very important part of uh, holding all these events of the IJF in hybrid because you see we can connect to uh, different corners of the world and uh, this is truly inspiring because recently in previous years maybe we did not really appreciate it that much because we knew that we can travel but it's important and actually yes uh, as Jenny also underlined the necessity to keep uh, young people with disabilities uh, online with the same amount of opportunities this is exactly the internet and hopefully internet can be safe and uh, given opportunities for young people and children and let us now move back to Russia where several uh, greatest companies uh, have launched together uh, an alliance of uh, on protection of children uh, online in the digital sphere and uh, our dear colleague uh, Oleg uh, Abdurashidov is with us. Oleg, do you hear us? Can you tell us about your work? How do you, uh, why did you create the, the alliance? Uh, what is uh, on your agenda? How can you help in protecting children and youth online? Please. I hope you can hear me well. Yes. And uh, thank you, IGF, and good day to all the participants. Well, my name is Zolek. I work at Kaspersky, and it is my honor to be here today to represent the Alliance for Children's Safety in Digital Environments from actually an unusually cold Moscow, even for December, is freezing out there. So, the, really, the question is why do we need to talk about children's safety? if young people right here in this room or young people we talk about when you talk about young generation are in fact the first true generation of digital natives. I have once asked my 16 years old daughter if she remembers the world without the internet. And of course she doesn't for as long as she remembers connectivity has always been an important part of her life and Googling is a skill now. So indeed, the internet has brought tremendous benefits to the generation of digital natives. It has changed the way young people communicate, the changed way, the way we study, the way we or they interact with the world. Of course, it opened up new avenues for self-expression, for self-actualization, created new jobs, new hobbies, and entirely new global communities. But what it has also created is a digital world that would be often unfamiliar to the parents of these young people, like to us. The physical world we live in, for instance, has some inbuilt security measures aimed at protecting kids. We have, for instance, we have special road signs in front of schools. We have age restrictions for alcohol consumption or adult content. And we only let young people drive cars after a certain age and after a long training. So in short, the entire societies help us as parents and as young citizens to navigate our life in the physical world safely. And this is not exactly the case in the digital domain. So you may have truly talented personalities on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. But in addition to those guys, the digital and, and, and talented girls and everyone else, the digital world is inhabited by fraudsters, extortionists, sexual predators, and scammers that are normally only a few clicks away. Surfing the web, unsuspecting kids may stumble upon a pornographic content or violent content without any warning, or with a warning that is easy to ignore and bypass. So the threats our kids or you guys, you girls, you young generation face online, such as cyberbullying or the so-called sexual grooming, are a magnitude greater than anything previous generation may have faced within the walls of a traditional school or within the communities they live in. And these issues are taking a heavy, heavy toll on the youth psychological health and well-being. So it is this genuine concern about safety and, and health and well-being of our own kids that brought together the leading internet, telecom, and media companies of Russia to create the Alliance for Children's Safety in Digital Environments early this year. So the Alliance, we are a self-regulating industry body that works together with representatives of the civil society, of NGOs, academia, government, 
to help create a digital environment, the digital spaces where younger generation can grow, learn, develop, and express themselves safely, and where we guarantee accessibility, inclusivity, and equality for all those uh, newcomer, newcomers and younger generation. We are not unique, of course, similar alliances work across the globe. For instance, European Alliance to Better Protect Minors Online was established in 2017 with the same concerns in mind. Another pan-European body, CEO Coalition to Make a Better Internet for Kids, brings together the companies committed to take positive action to make internet safer for, uh, for minors. So another example could be the initiative of the Ministry of Information and Communications of Vietnam, of Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore, and a range of other countries that are genuinely concerned about the issue. So, in this area, we can also tap into the rich expertise developed by the international organization, such as, for instance, UNICEF and ITU's joint guidelines for industry on online child protection and OECD Council recommendation on children in the digital environment. Where we somewhat differ is that we are looking to build an environment where rules are created through dialogue with the entire society not just outsourced to the lawmakers or to the industry self-regulation or to the industry bodies alone. Because we are talking about questions like ethics, morals, well-being, safety, traditions, uh, innovations. And these are all things that need to be discussed in a broader group of people. So, and in our first project, the Voluntary Digital Ethics Charter contains five core principles that I, we believe are important. That includes respecting individual rights of a child, share responsibility for digital health and well being of children, confidentiality and personal data protection of minors, inclusivity and accessibility. I have heard from the conversation today that this is an important issue that we need to address. And of course, mutual respect of shared values and different cultures. So we believe that safer digital space require us that we all together as parents, as businesses, as teacher, as ombudspersons, as developers, as regulators, as volunteer, and as users, in short, as members of the modern digital societies that we work together to make this world safer. And this is why we invite like-minded organizations in Russia to support the charter by voluntarily agreeing to follow the simple ethical principles when working with kids and adolescents. To do so, you only need to notify through form on our website. It could be found on uh, the page internetforkids.ru slash charter. And we are proud to have many signatories already, as well as new members to our consultancy board, including representative of Russian youth organizations like the Youth Internet Ombudsman present here. And we're also calling the global technology and media companies to consider joining the alliance, since in the digital world, there are no borders. But what we probably need is a little more of safe space for our youngest, most vulnerable, and yes, most important users. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Oleg. And uh, this is a tremendous initiative, and we really hope that this experience can also be shared and widely explored uh, by other uh, private sector uh, stakeholders globally. Uh, because, ag again, what can be more important than the sustainable, safe, and prosperous life of uh, future generations? And in order to keep them safe and uh, promote uh, digital technologies which would serve the humanity, help us realize even more potential, this is, of course, important to start from the early age and it's a great great uh, honor to see that uh, so uh, huge and well-known uh, companies from russia united the efforts this is just amazing uh, you know that the main uh, the best initiatives are those convened from the grassroots level or in our case uh, when business who understand their audience that these are also their future clients and future employees team members they are already now uh, trying to make this bridge to their uh, safe uh, childhood and then uh, of course they are uh, entering the adult life and uh, I don't know if David Okpatuma from Nigeria is already online with us. 
Yes, I am, Roman. Excellent. Uh, David, please let us know uh, how do you find those initiatives and ideas uh, which were just outlined by previous speakers? What is the uh, African Union example on how uh, do you work with uh, young people in the digital sphere? And what do you think about those initiatives like digital youth, ombuds people uh, globally? All right, thank you so much, Roman, for uh, such um, a question. And borrowing a leaf from what previous speakers have said, it is um, no doubt that the digital space needs to be as inclusive as possible, carrying and bearing in mind that everybody, every group of people, every demography needs to be represented, protected, safe and secure in the digital space. So as regards Africa and um, the requirements for an ombudsman, ombuds people, it is, it is without uh, mincing words that sometimes some of the accountability mechanisms for governments and institutions globally now are more digital than um, they are um, analog. And we need people especially young people who are as adepts with the technology cool devices and tools and have the enough mastery and objectivity to navigate such terrains and represent the diverse groups of people in all fairness and safety. Typical cases as we have in some Nigerian societies today or some African societies today is that we see the censorship, we see the control and regulation unfairly so of governments over digital spaces. And some of the complaints that young people or even communities have made to these regards are not fairly represented reasons being since the larger crop of the people raising the complaints are young people, most government um, agencies feel they need to thwart the, the, the progressiveness of such um, um, complaints, of such checks, of such um, issues that are being raised as regards the, 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 the complaints handling or the um, or, or, or the check, or the checks and balances that are being introduced by um, young people. So, in as much as um, this is a, a very um, vital topic to, end, uh, to to delve into, we need to understand that some parts of the world um, we have so much marginalization, especially in parts of Africa where we have fewer people who are able to access the internet space to begin with. And if we are seeing policies of governments and of, of, of institutions being digitalized, then we know that a lot of people are, are, are left behind in that pursuit. And we need to ensure that we have um, young people who understand, like uh, Roman said, that the, the local contexts and are able to interpret some of these policies to the, 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 the most underserved communities and people to come to a place of higher and better responsibility and ensure that there's proper accountability, there's, there's po um, proper uh, dynamics when it comes to the mechanisms of, of um, harnessing the digital space and ensuring that people from everywhere are able to be represented, are able to be protected and um, their complaints handled within the right quarters and within time frame without the fear of being um, dominated or controlled by governments or agencies or the giant or big tech companies globally. That's what I have to say in that regard. Thank you so much, Roman. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. And uh, it's really important that we already uh, took into consideration vision of people from different regions. And uh, hopefully, with all of you, those who are interested to join this work and continue this global movement, uh, we can all uh, just come back and start to act every day. And... Uh, 
Hopefully that in conjunction with uh, all organizing partners of the Youth Summit, we can start to organize this process, maybe by using the timeline which Alim and colleagues uh, proposed. But let's see. Everything is agile now in the world. You never know what will be next week. And uh, here I just want to say that most surely I can tell you that young people and youth uh, will be the priority track for the Russia's presidency in 2025. So we have several years to prepare uh, and to show the result, maybe again as was illustrated uh, in your plan, but let's see how it works. And uh, UN is really uh, the place uh, for all of us and it is changing. Uh, it hears young people, like last year it was uh, amazing uh, experience with UN 75 process. And as far as we know, uh, maybe even same people, if I'm not confusing, uh, but we'll do uh, the same sort of feedback collection for the uh, uh, recent uh, Secretary General's initiative uh, on creating global digital compact. So as far as I understand, this is a sort of attempt to have the unified rules of the game in the internet space. And uh, let's just make happen that young people are the key pillar of this document, of this process. So I think we have a lot of uh, things to do. As far as I understand, there will be a future summit, again, because it's for future generations, uh, in September 2023, if I'm not confusing, and we still have time to do good work. Dear colleagues, we still have some time, and uh, please kindly raise your hand in Zoom or on-site, raise your questions, let us know your uh, feelings of what has been just said. And as far as I see, our speakers also want to have some couple of remarks, yeah, please. Just a couple of remarks. Thanks, Roman. So Roman, I think, just mentioned a very important uh, question because, as he mentioned, there will be a 20th anniversary IGF in Russia in 2025, and it is a strategic year for UN IGF. And I would like to support Roman's belief that the youth empowerment track will become uh, one of the main priorities of the forum. And I'm pretty sure that uh, leading it will lead to a global to this year, it will lead to a global wide door network of youth digital persons and a joint international effort by all UN member states. And of course, uh, we expect a uh, multi-stakeholder approach and full cooperation in that regard, uh, probably expecting also a global wide door summit in 2025, the year of IGF. Last. Quite ambitious. I don't know, Emilia, would you support uh, such idea? Yeah, it's, you can just speak. Yeah, it's oh, okay. And it's on even when I turn it off. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, just let me. Uh, yeah, I, I think that I absolutely uh, support and I'm very, very glad to hear that for Russia as organizer of the IGF 2000, uh, 2025. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that the youth track will be a priority. I guess it's a wonderful idea. And uh, I just wanted to add that uh, we, as we had this honor to organize this year's youth summit, we are very open to co uh, to cooperation. We don't want to stop here like the youth summit happened this year, but I think that a lot of very, very talented young people have gathered together and it would be really bad to let it go. So we are very open to the cooperation, to building upon uh, this year's youth summit uh, toward the youth summit in Ethiopia, then in Tokyo, then I think Indonesia, and then in Russia. So, so yeah, uh, I really hope that we can go this path together and it will be amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. As you all know, there is uh, so-called NRIs, National Regional Youth Initiatives of the IGF, and the Russian uh, Youth Internet Governance Forum just became one of them this year. So again, if you still do not do it in your country, just uh, consider this as a green light because uh, young people uh, deserve to have a, a platform. It might be fully online event. We just you know, can notify universities, high schools, and those who are interested can join. If 
in the beginning uh, you cannot find some partners or sponsors but we hope that uh, private sector technical community government uh, stakeholder groups can pr protect and promote such initiative uh, for young people uh, and now as we still have 10 minutes uh, dear colleagues on site or online please raise your hands if you want to ask any question or share your experience in the IGF in Poland. Please raise your hand if this was your first IGF. One, two, three, four, four. Oh my goodness, this is a majority. It means that throughout this uh, pandemic couple of years, uh, the new wave came into the IGF space, which makes me very, very enthusiastic. Future generation, yeah. Will you, where? <laughs> to IGF or to Poland? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's, um, let's have it this way. Will, will you come uh, to Poland again? <laughs> no, no, they're just shy. I see, I see a very, like I would say, firm uh, half of the audience. Uh, online uh, audience, you can also raise your hands. We, we want to take your voice also in consideration. But will you come to next IGF? I believe it will be in Ethiopia. Not sure, but okay, in any case, we uh, all will be ready to participate online. So, do you want to ask a question? Please, come here, introduce yourself. Well, without a mask, it really works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Roman, you know, by chance. <laughs> I'm coming from Azerbaijan. Oh, it, it works, do you listen? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm here and represent the youth department of the Council of Europe and you know majority of here as I see they I, I believe they identify themselves as young people but I see that they are actually young. Uh, what I'm really interested in is uh, yeah, you know, we are talking. So, you know, I mean, different topics like you know access to technologies, access to um, the uh, different uh, different level of capacities, raising awareness, etc. But I'm really interested in a way uh, how much you are representing decision-making processes. You know, we have so many people here and uh, we have so much ideas, but are we able to uh, implement them? And are we decision-makers in this process? You know, we have so many panelists here, even audience maybe, uh, if they want, they can actually uh, answer this question. But I'm really interested if um, it's the case that you participate in decision-making pr processes uh, in a way that you want to implement uh, your ideas and projects. This is the first question, actually, <laughs> and it's open to for who? the... Who, who do you address it? To all the panelists and even audience, if they want to. Okay. Uh, can I have the second question or later? Yeah, I think let's take it one by one. Do you, okay. do you want cool. to answer? Please. Okay, yeah, this is actually a very good question because, uh, you know, I think that you just touched something uh, which is like a central thing because, okay, it's great to have ideas, but what if nobody mm -hmm. make them happen? So, yeah, uh, I think that it is uh, something I also talked about while talking about our initiative of the Project Youth Summit is to creating solutions that are targeted to the very, very specific people, companies, governments. So, you know, you, for example, you have, I don't know, let me just take something. Uh, you see that people in your region, the school children in your region, they don't have access to digital education because a lot of them does, uh, don't have ICTs. They, so, and you know that there's a company that throws away thousands of laptops every year because they are just buying new ones. And you have this idea, yeah, maybe those companies could give those laptops to, the, to those children. So it's an example of the solution that, first of all, is very specific and has a very specific target, which is this company. I know it is not the exactly policy-making thing because it is not on the... Uh, level of the law regulation, but this is just example how I think it should work. So if you want to have your solution implemented, you have to just advocate, you have to deliver it to the right person, the one who could actually help you in implementing it. So for example, to the particular parliamentarians or to particular private companies. Thank you. 
Your second question, please. Okay. Um, the second question is, um, you know, um, like in the last five days, I've participated in more than 10 sessions, and it was really, uh, there was really interesting discussions uh, regarding, you know, access, literacy, ICTs, AI, I don't know, technologies, etc. What I'm really interested in is the concrete solutions that we can give uh, to reach the goals that we set. I mean, um, as a young people, and I'm actually working on this topic exactly, digital use work, uh, I'm, I have a research on it, and I'm really interested in uh, a way that how do you see the solutions in order to reach the goals that, like, for example, we talk right, right now, online people, you know, talking and uh, discussing around this. So um, I would like to have like really concrete, like one or two steps uh, that you believe that will be really pri priority um, to, to make sure that young people really participate and young people really have access to technology and internet. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. We still have five minutes. We are okay to uh, grab one uh, more question. We hope to have one more guest uh, joining us uh, uh, in person now for concluding the remarks. So, anyone to ask any question, or please introduce yourself, say where you're from, and your question and to who you address it. All right, mine is not a question. Uh, mine is just uh, an encouragement. I can see so many young people in the room. Uh, my name is Innocent Adrico, and I am from Uganda. I coordinate the Uganda Youth IGF. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, one thing, uh, I've been in so many sessions, and uh, I'm glad to say that I've seen so many young people bring up solutions, bring up ideas. But one thing I've realized is that uh, these solutions are going to need to be localized to the contexts of our regions and uh, countries, yeah? For example, uh, I do realize that uh, whereas some countries are going to start, uh, I look at it like uh, a line that has one to 10, whereas some people are starting from two going up, some people are still on zero. Okay, maybe there's no one at zero, but maybe one. And some people at, let's say, five. Yeah. So how do we see that we can catch up with the ones who are ahead? Yesterday I was in a session and I was telling people how in Uganda schools have been closed for two years. Yeah. How are you going to catch up with the rest of the world? Yeah. So that's already a loophole. Yeah. So and then another thing is uh, if I look in the room here, I don't uh, I don't know whether we have any youth who is uh, involved in policy making. Maybe you can just raise up your hand. Yeah, it's great to see some. But I must admit that some sessions I've not had any. How are they going to get these issues? Like, because uh, uh, what I know is, well, in uh, our national IGFs, for example, we usually invite, for example, this year at Uganda Youth IGF, we had the president's senior advisor on youth affairs. Yeah? Why I got him there was because I knew at least he can be able to take into account some of these issues that we discussed, some of the outcomes of the IGF. So let the IGF not end here. We need to see that whatever we discuss, whatever outcomes we have, are able to reach to the right people at the right time for implementation. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have just been joined by the... Uh, most important person for the NRIs, it's uh, Anya Gengo from the IGF Secretariat, who literally supports all the initiatives globally from civil society, young people, and it's a wonderful, wonderful friend of mine. Thank you for joining us. Uh, before the concluding remarks, uh, and your maybe wishes to participants to develop their youth tracks, uh, let us give the floor for one minute to Fred from uh, our online uh, participants. He was raising a hand. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, yes, uh, I, I must admit uh, this session has been very great and interactive, uh, considering the, uh, the various ideas that have been speculated by some of the youth 
especially the, the ones that project the timelines from this time all the way to 2025. I think it's quite an ambition and it is achievable. It is achievable, first of all, through collaboration. Uh, and it is achievable, first of all, by being specific at, uh, in achieving one goal at a time. Yes, Emilia gave an example which uh, indicates that uh, and a specific example, let me say, that the companies that have uh, computers that use it for a period of time and disposes it are able to repurpose it to help some aspects of the digital uh, literacy that we are looking at. Now, if we work together to be able to initiate solutions as youth, it is having a lot of impact in the communities. The, uh, the persons that came to speak at the microphone, one of them mentioned that how do we localize these solutions? And so I believe all of us are coming from different backgrounds, working together can bring these different views together, whether it's an online platform or it's an on-site platform. So there's the simple solution here is working together and at targeting one goal at a time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Fred. And uh, yes, a big round of applause. I must admit it's a perfect timing. And if Anna can kindly uh, give us some concluding remarks and uh, tell maybe how you uh, find this year's youth track and this uh, first ever youth IJF and how, what is the vision of development of uh, youth track further among other NRIs, the floor is yours. Well, thank you so much. It's so nice to join you here. And I'm sorry that I missed the biggest part of this session, which is also very close to my heart for personal reasons. Uh, there's a main session of the NRIs just downstairs, so I was rushing up, but I had to be uh, there. Uh, thank you to my dear friend Roman for uh, organizing this session and inviting me. I think uh, a colleague from Ghana that just spoke said very good words, saying that you don't maybe see young people in the areas that are impacting the policy decisions. And it's just quite the opposite from my side, I have to say, but I do understand why, why you said that. It's the opposite because through the youth IGFs, it's just impressive the way they are basically making their own way to reach the decision makers, to become decision shapers, to impact those that are making concrete decisions. And I think we're joining a national or regional or new IGFs in your countries, in your regions, is a very effective way to be part of creating a possible solution on a certain matter on internet governance. There are 141 NRIs, that's how we call them shortly, and I think all of you, regardless where you live, you will be able to find one where you can connect to. I can testify from my personal experience, and I'm sure Roman and I see Amelia here, they will back me up. Those are very, very friendly networks of really high-level experts in terms of the knowledge just that exists there, but also those are very good networking opportunities. So that's always my encouragement to you to start from your own homes. You don't need to travel anywhere to be part of the global solutions. And I think that's something that we should maybe take as a message from this wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will definitely sum up this session uh, with the report. We send it to the Secretariat, to uh, uh, other UN entities, other global stakeholders, including business, technical community, governments, of course, because uh, several important ideas were outlined here, including the very specific and detailed uh, action plan of uh, finding uh, good young people for representing uh, the youth in the digital sphere as digital youth uh, ombuds people, ombuds teams. And uh, we even discussed uh, with um, organizers of the youth summit that maybe we can gather uh, all outputs of the youth-led sessions of the forum, including the youth summit messages, and do some interesting infographics or document with very specific ideas and timeline so that young people can uh, actually understand why we gather here, what is the plan and how do we plan to bring this forward? What do you think? If you support this idea, let's raise the hand. Wonderful. Do you mind 
if we uh, conclude the session or anyone has any uh, final word, remark, dear speakers. Just one sentence. Uh, let's just make youth involvement trendy. Thank you. Let's support Internet United, always united. Excellent. So thank you very much, our online participants, our technical team, our organizers from across the world, online speakers, participants, on-site participants. Let's try to uh, do a um, collective photo, uh, of course, with uh, wearing masks. And I see some of you are wearing masks from the Center for Global IT Cooperation from our booth. And it's very encouraging because if you noticed, uh, we did it and as the name of our session, and I will demonstrate it now. Because what? Because all we need is youth. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for participation, and I kindly invite you to stand here and our uh, online participants to switch on camera so we can also screenshot a collective one. Please. Thank you.